El próximo miércoles se inaugura en Lima, Perú, la Asamblea General de la Organización de Estados Americanos, OEA. Mi colega Cindy Regidor conversó con el diplomático Sir Ronald Sanders, embajador de Antigua y Barbuda ante la OEA. Le preguntó sobre el debate en la OEA en torno a Nicaragua y la posición de los países del Caribe ante la crisis de derechos humanos y de democracia. Y esto fue lo que nos dijo. Gracias, embajador Sanders, por esta entrevista. Thank you very much for inviting me. Este 5 de octubre empieza la Asamblea General de la OEA en Perú. ¿Cuál es el tema principal de esta cumbre? These summits have, these meetings have themes, but I don't think anybody particularly pays attention to them uh, because people are coming to the OS to talk about issues that are issues of the moment, uh, important questions that confront the organization and its member states, issues of democracy, the rule of law, uh, human rights, and economic development. Uh, these are all critical issues, particularly at this time. And so I think that's what the focus of the discussions will be. La última resolución sobre Nicaragua del Consejo Permanente fue en agosto de este año, condenando el cierre de miles de ONGs, la persecución a la Iglesia y los periodistas, y demandando la liberación de los presos políticos. ¿Será la crisis de Nicaragua un tema relevante en esta cumbre? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it will be because uh, the tenets of the organization of American states are being violated uh, by the behavior of the government of Nicaragua at this time. Uh, the countries of the organization of American states have an obligation to uphold the principles by which we say we collectively stand. And those principles include uh, free and fair elections, representative democracy, human rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press. And many, if not all, of the member states of the organization are now convinced that these principles are, each of them, being violated in Nicaragua. So something has to be said and something will be said. Desde el año pasado hemos visto que más países del Caribe se han sumado a la condena al gobierno nicaragüense por las violaciones de derechos humanos y a la democracia. Por primera vez en junio de ese año vimos a Barbados, Grenada, San Cristóbal y Nieves, Surinam y Trinidad y Tobago demandando la liberación de los presos políticos. ¿Por qué ese cambio? Because I think everybody from the Caribbean certainly were prepared to give uh the government of Nicaragua uh, an opportunity uh, to rectify and remedy those things that were going wrong in the society. Uh, we, each of us, at one point or another, talked to members of the Nicaraguan government, including its representatives at the OAS, but not only them, ministerial representatives who we saw from time to time, and asked them, to ensure that these violations that were slowly happening over time, that these violations should cease. Uh, it was only after no attention was paid to our implorings, no attention was paid to our urgings, uh, that countries in the Caribbean decided that they had to now start uh, to criticize and condemn Uh, the continued violations in Nicaragua. But we did give the Ortega government a chance, first of all, to remedy the situation before we spoke out against it. No es el caso de San Vicente y las Granadinas, cuyo primer ministro, Ralph González, es cercano al gobierno de Ortega, que inclusive le condecoró en julio pasado. ¿Por qué se da esa diferencia con la mayoría de países en el Caribe? Well, I can speak for the Prime Minister of St. Vincent, uh, Dr. Ralph González, Uh, he runs a sovereign country, he is the Prime Minister, and uh, he has a right to formulate his own policy uh, in regard to every nation in the world, including Nicaragua. He has chosen uh, the position that he has taken, and it's his sovereign right to do so. so and I cannot speak uh, for why he is doing it. That's a matter entirely for him. 
¿Cuál es el rol y la importancia del bloque de países caribeños en la OEA, en particular en el abordaje de casos como el de Nicaragua o Venezuela? Well, our, our position is quite frankly uh, that we are supportive of the charter of the organization and of its inter-American democratic charter. We are free, freedom-loving countries. We have respect for religion, for the free practice of religion. We have respect for political rights and civil rights and freedom of the press. We don't lock up our political opponents. Uh, people are free to have dissenting views. Uh, the media is free to report those views and to have its own commentaries on them. And they all do, because we believe in a system in which if there is a difference, we discuss it. We dialogue on it. We try to put forward different positions on it. And it is up to the people of the country to decide, after they've heard all of those arguments, which political party they believe uh, should govern them. We have free and fair elections, and when those elections happen, we respect the decision of the people. Therefore, that is the position we take into the OS. Because if we were not to take that position, then we would be changing our own value system. And we will become different countries, different from what we are now. And that we will not allow to happen. Freedom in all aspects of life in our countries is essential to our economic prosperity, to our economic growth, and to the uh, growth of our people. El borrador de la resolución sobre Nicaragua que se debatirá en la cumbre propone crear una comisión de alto nivel para intentar dialogar con el régimen en Nicaragua. ¿Cuál sería el rol de esa comisión si el gobierno ha rechazado el diálogo con el secretario general de la OEA? ¿Pueden algunos países de la OEA tender un puente que Almagro no pudo tender? Well, we are simply extending a hand of friendship once again, uh, once again, uh, to the Ortega government in Nicaragua. What we do not want to be accused of is simply closing the door in his face. But so we say, despite everything, we've urged you to talk to, uh, it's not the Secretary General, incidentally, but to a high level team appointed by the permanent council. It wasn't the Secretary General who would be doing any talking. Uh, President Ortega did not respond to that invitation. We've made several other overtures to which uh, he has not responded. We are offering this high level group again in the hope that he might respond. But we don't expect him to, frankly. Uh, we expect that uh, what has happened so far will be exactly the same case. But that is not all that the resolution says. We are being very condemnatory of the treatment of uh, Catholic uh, people of the clergy and of, of the Roman Catholic faith, the treatment of the Mother Teresa uh, sisters who were there, the treatment of the bishop, uh, all of this we are criticizing and criticizing very firmly. We are also criticizing the fact that political prisoners remain in prison in Nicaragua in very desperate conditions. And we have called for those political prisoners to be freed. Uh, we have also drawn attention to the fact that uh, the press has not only been muzzled, but it's almost been decimated. All of these things are things that we are criticizing in the resolution that we are putting forward. So don't focus only on what we've offered as a hand of friendship. Recognize also that we are saying that things are wrong and they need to be remedied. But nonetheless, we are a democratic institution. And even though the Ortega government says it has withdrawn Nicaragua from the organization, that withdrawal does not take place for another year and a half. So for the next 18 months or so, Nicaragua is still officially a member of the Organization of American States. And we are obliged to try our best to reach that government and to say to them, look, we still are interested in helping you to remedy the situation and restore democracy in your country, including Uh, finding ways in which free and fair elections can be held and, uh, and a government elected by the people uh, can govern the country.
Para muchos analistas, la impunidad del régimen de Ortega ante las resoluciones del Consejo Permanente es una indicación del fracaso político de la OEA. ¿Tiene la OEA recursos de presión o persuasión para contribuir a la búsqueda de una salida a la crisis de Nicaragua? Well, first of all, we have to be invited into the country to do so. And uh, we have not been invited. In fact, what's happened is that every time we've asked to send a mission, it's been refused. And missions that were there were not allowed to do their work. Uh, you know that the OS mission was seized and closed down by the Ortega uh, government. Um, so, you know, we have tried. Um, and we have tried within the cap our capacity to do something. And remember, we are talking about uh, 34 member states of the organization uh, who have to come to an understanding of what can be done. And whatever can we can do has to be done within the constraints of the Charter of the United of the Organization of American States and the Inter-American Democratic Charter. And those things we are doing. Gracias, Embajador Sanders. Gracias por ver este video para seguir derrotando la censura en Nicaragua. Si deseas apoyar el periodismo independiente de Confidencial con una donación, puedes hacerlo a través de nuestro canal de YouTube. Lo único que tienes que hacer es ir al chat de nuestras transmisiones en vivo y dar clic en el botón Super Chat. Así podrás agregar tu comentario junto a un donativo. También puedes dar tu aporte en el video que más te guste haciendo clic en el botón de Super Thanks, ubicado en la barra inferior de todos nuestros videos. Con tu apoyo seguiremos investigando y contando la verdad para informar a nuestras audiencias.